This year has been pretty rough on our childhoods. First we lose Stefan Carl, then we lose Stan Lee, and now, on November 27th, 2018, we've lost Steven Hillenburg, the creator of SpongeBob SquarePants and Rocco's Modern Life. As the creator of one of the biggest cartoons of a lot of people's childhoods, he managed to be a huge influence on a lot of people. He was a man who defined an entire generation of hope, humor, happiness, and triumph. And to honor his memory, I think it would be appropriate to review something that manages to capture every everything that people loved about his work. And personally, I don't think there's anything that manages to capture everything that people loved about his work, quite like the season 2 episode, Ban Geeks. The story I'm guessing is a safe bet that you probably know. But if you don't, it's about Squidward getting several characters together to perform a band after being confronted by his rival Squilliam. On paper, it's a pretty basic premise. But with the exceptional writing, it manages to be one of the greatest episodes of any TV show. One thing that really stands out about this episode compared to most others is its sense of humor. From the very first moment, we're introduced to how on-point, well-timed, and creative the comedy is. The joke with Squidward being told his clarinet playing sounds like a dying animal is a great way to immediately showcase this. The comedy is centered around musical instruments, musical performances, bands, and just music in general. So opening the episode with a joke about Squidward's clarinet playing is not only funny, but it perfectly ties into what the rest of the episode is about. Aside from that, the comedy throughout this episode is highly satisfying and enjoyably chaotic. Each joke fits the characters very organically. And this episode has some of the best examples demonstrating how the best jokes in the series are the ones that feel like they can be only done by certain characters. Remember Remember the part where Patrick kicks Sandy and she cartoonishly beats him up as they exit the building? We then hear a horrifying scream from Patrick as everyone just sits there in silence, nervously awaiting the outcome of what happened outside. Patrick walks in and we see how Sandy shoved his face through the trumpet to the point where his freaking neck is the trumpet. And Patrick makes a couple of comedic trumpet sounds as he takes his seat. This joke is absolutely hilarious. From the steady build-up to the punchline to the fact that it's a combination of smaller jokes combining into one huge one. But the most important part of this joke is how the two characters delivering it are Patrick and Sandy. At this point in the series, before the Dark Ages when they were Flanderized, Patrick and Sandy had clear and defined characteristics that are displayed perfectly in these couple of seconds. Patrick is a well-meaning but idiotic buffoon, and Sandy is a hot-headed brawler. It makes sense that Patrick would take SpongeBob's phrasing too literally, and the reaction that Sandy has is exactly the kind of reaction that you'd expect her to make. The main reason that this joke works so well is because it's a joke that can only be done with Patrick and Sandy. Because aside from the build-up and the pacing of the joke, you get the sensation that you're watching a joke that's faithfully depicting these two characters, expressing parts of their personality that are highly familiar with them. The character-based comedy is where the episode's humor really shines. So many of them work because of the specific characters they choose to deliver them and how they fit into the situation given to them. Patrick asking if mayonnaise is an instrument, Mr. Krabs complaining about free food, Plankton commenting on instruments of torture. These are all cleverly set up bits that complement each character perfectly. And even then, there's several more styles of comedy that are put to really good use in this episode. Slapstick, physical, verbal, dark, anti-humor, running jokes. There's a great variety to the comedy in this episode, and each of the jokes they use are built up excellently. It's crazy, it's loony, it's well-timed and delivered, it's easily some of the best comedy in the entire show. The story is also very well-paced. None of the jokes or the key moments of the narrative ever drag on or rush over. They all flow by naturally. The episode does a great job mixing the jokes with Squidward's dilemma, making for a really well-grounded narrative despite being 11 minutes. What's really impressive about this episode's pacing is that Band Geeks has one of the biggest castings in the entire show. Nearly every single major and supporting character is here. SpongeBob, Patrick, Squidward, Sandy, Mr. Krabs, Pearl, Plankton, Mrs. Puff, Larry the Lobster, all while introducing an entirely new character, Squilliam. This episode could have easily been overcrowded with slow pacing, where they completely stop the plot for each character to get their own joke. But thankfully, the episode doesn't do that. Instead of giving each character individual attention, the episode creates a situation where they need to interact with each other. They need to cooperate for the story to flow naturally and for the jokes to be funny. And the episode succeeds flawlessly at this. Their presence complements the story being told and the interactions they have are really refreshing compared to a lot of other episodes. Characters you normally didn't see together are all in one place and they play off each other perfectly. Not only are they properly portrayed, but they're also given equal amounts of attention and screen time. 
It perfectly juggles this huge cast while delivering both hilarious comedy and a well-paced story. This could be because, like a lot of Spongebob episodes, the story of Band Geeks is a very simple premise. It's not a complicated or overly dramatic idea. It's just Squidward forming a band to impress his rival. Because of the episode's simplistic setup, it allows for more creative possibilities without having the pressure of meeting high expectations. It's a scenario that feels like it was meant to be comedic and lighthearted, and the writers make the most of this idea. But as much as I gush over the comedy, the story, the pacing, and the setup, the one thing that really makes this episode perfect is the fact that it's a Squidward-centric episode. Making Squidward the main character, even the hero, was easily the best decision. Up to this point in the series, Squidward was largely seen as the bitter, grumpy stick in the mud who was made the butt of everyone's jokes. At nearly every turn, he was pushed around, brought down, beaten up, or some combination of the above. But in the first three seasons, it wasn't unwarranted. Because Squidward would tend to act like a jerk, the karma that he received was deserving of his behavior, and the karma that he received was fitting for the actions that he took. It never went too far or felt needlessly cruel like in the show's Dark Age. And in episodes like Fools in April and Christmas Who, the episode is about Squidward coming to terms with the consequences of his actions. There's been episodes that place Squidward in the starring role in the past, like Pizza Delivery and SB129. But in this case, Band Geeks is the first episode that places Squidward in a position where you want to see him succeed. At its core, the plot is about him trying to live up to the expectations of someone constantly one-upping him. While the episode does put time into focusing on the other characters for the sake of comedy, it never forgets that this is Squidward's story. You're shown how Squidward is constantly trying his hardest to form this band, and he just keeps failing with his rival breathing down his neck. And because the majority of the episode is about showing Squidward trying his hardest, it makes his situation sympathetic. He really puts forth time and effort into making this work, and it's established at the beginning how personal this band is to him. And even when the participants mess up, Squidward doesn't get mad at anyone. He doesn't act like a jerk or act condescending, he just wants to feel like for once in his life he achieved something. This episode takes all of the right steps to make Squidward's sympathy feel deserved and appropriate. So you're on his side throughout the entire experience. Even at the end, when he finally addresses the band, he's not exactly pitting the blame on them. As he breaks down and cry, he's starting to put the blame on himself for getting his hopes too high. Because of how subtly these events were connected together, this scene just feels even more heartbreaking. Seeing him lose all of his hope after he tried so hard, you just feel that. It really gets to you. But it's at this moment that Spongebob begins to realize just how much this meant to Squidward and gives the big inspirational speech. The gang gets themselves together and they train for the big event at tomorrow's Bubble Bowl. And we finally get to the big moment that everything's been building up to. The climax. The band shows up to Squidward's dismay and they all rise to the surface world which actually takes place in the human world. And then we get the big song number, which not only serves as an entertaining finale, but a satisfying conclusion to Squidward's character arc. From the very first notes, this song sets the mood and the tone perfectly. There's a robust performance of the horns and trumpets, followed by a moment of silence. We then hear a gentle melody of Plankton playing the piano. The band steps aside, and we see them focusing on Spongebob. He begins to sing with the heavenly voice of David Glenn Isley, who I must say puts on a phenomenally amazing performance. Patrick plays the drums, and it's here where the music, the singing, and the visuals really kick in. Squidward is stunned, surprised, and completely shocked at what he's seeing. The band that he thought was going to embarrass him is putting on the most epic show that you've ever seen in his honor. And when he realizes that he's got the upper hand on Squilliam, he gives him a sly look and proceeds to embrace his moment of triumph. Everything about this song is so full of passion and power that you get sucked into every single second of it. The lyrics are captivating, the music has a grand scale to it, and the visual spectacle fits perfectly with the rock and roll style. It sounds like something that came out of Journey, it's just so freaking awesome. Awesome. Squidward gives a send-off to his defeated rival and makes one last leap of victory as the crowd cheers on. This ending is, without question, one of the greatest, most perfectly put-together endings of all time. One of the best in any TV show. The build-up, the expression, the sense of triumph, it's simply amazing. And what makes it so amazing is that it finally gives Squidward what he was meant to have. His shining moment. Squidward was practically the underdog of this story. 
faced with a hopeless situation while proving himself to his rival. And he manages to come right out on top just as all hope seems lost. And that's something that I really like about this ending. The message. It perfectly portrays the idea of how hope can be found in even the most dire of situations. It can come in many unexpected forms. And what makes it even better is when it comes in the form of something that you would least expect. It was really satisfying to see Squidward finally be genuinely happy for once. And what makes it even better is the fact that it was all made possible by the one person that he always despised, who did all of this as a selfless act of friendship without asking for anything in return. This episode is a standing ovation of how in spite of all of his naive flaws, Spongebob is a really good friend who's willing to do whatever it takes, even pull off the impossible to put a smile on their face. He was a great character in this last couple of minutes, making Squidward's impossible dream a reality. What helps to make this so refreshing is that you barely see Squidward win. And seeing him end up winning to such an extreme gives you an overwhelming sense of joy. This was the first time in the entire series where he truly had a shot to be more than just a grump. More than just a butt monkey. He was given the chance to be a three-dimensional character with a three-dimensional character arc. And in the end, he succeeded with flying colors. After one and a half seasons of being overshadowed by the other characters, he finally gets the spotlight. Something that is both cathartic and inspirational. Watching this episode years later, as an adult who now understands Squidward so much more than when I did as a kid, this episode made me connect with him in a way that I never have with any of the other characters. I felt for his struggle, his dedication, his lowest moment, his final victory, and most importantly, his humanity. That level of writing is pure genius, and it perfectly embodies all of the strengths of SpongeBob SquarePants. So many people have renounced this episode as the absolute best in the series, and after going over it myself, I can easily see why. It's that rare Spongebob episode that has the perfect blend of comedy, drama, and heart. Very few episodes are like this one, and making it about Squidward's journey to victory is what makes it all the more sweet. I know it's cliche to say it, but this really is my favorite Spongebob episode. And it is because it just feels like the perfect combination of everything that was great about Steven Hillenburg. What Steven ended up doing with Spongebob was unlike any other cartoon out there. He put an organic sense of humor and love into his craft, and it ended up influencing millions upon millions of people. His creation of Spongebob Squarepants ended up making a much bigger difference in the world than anyone could have predicted. Spongebob is more than just a cartoon. He's an icon. He had a really huge impact on a lot of people's childhoods, shaping their personalities, encouraging them to pursue certain interests, even helping them find their own voice in culture. If anything, our generation actually owes a part of our identity to Spongebob, and it's really all thanks to Steven himself. We've all been hit pretty hard by the loss of this great man, but at the same time, we can always remember him for what he left behind. Spongebob episodes like Band Geeks help me really feel a little better about his passing, because they're an example of all the childhood memories that he created. The laughs, the emotion, the creativity, the love, the inspiration. It was the kind of legacy that only Steven Hillenburg could have left behind. And as far as I'm concerned, he left behind something truly special. Something that will certainly go down in history as some of the best cartoon entertainers entertainment out there. Thank you, Steven Hillenburg, for all the good times and memories. You were a true ocean man, through and through, right to the very end. You will forever be in our hearts. Ocean, like